Well, hey, so we're going to do another video about cigar box guitars for um, a process that I use to mark the neck of the guitar for a fretless guitar on how to make the guitar change the noise when you're playing it. Uh, for those who don't understand, like me, because I really don't know what I'm talking about, this might be helpful. I hope I can say it in a manner that uh, uh, makes sense. For those of you that know what you're doing or real musicians, be entertained. Anyway, uh, let's talk about how a guitar makes noise. So a guitar is basically some strings that are stretched at a certain length, and the longer the string, the lower the tone that it makes when you pluck it. When you pluck it, it vibrates and makes sound like this. Now when you change the length of the string, so basically right now the string is this long, it's from here to here, from here to here. You can change the length on a fretted guitar, and these little bars that run up and down the neck, those are frets. You can change the length of the string by pushing your finger down, and now the length is, instead of from here to here, it's shorter. It's from here to here. So you got that, now the string is shorter. So that's what you do. When you see these guys that have spent so much time, energy, and effort practicing and learning and building a skill, and their fingers look like a spider running up and down the neck. That's what they're doing. They're changing the length of certain strings and in combination make an amazing noise. It's awesome. But again, you make a noise by changing the length of the string and on a fretted cigar box guitar or any guitar. You do that by pushing down on the fret. Can, if you start to practice, you can make a little noise. So that's how the fretted guitar works. But I actually like a fretless guitar better, or cigar box guitar. And the difference being is that this one has frets, but this one doesn't have any frets. It's got markers, little dots that I've used to show me where the frets would be. But other than that, there's no place to push down. So how do you change the length of the, the string to make the noise change? You use a slide. This becomes your fret. It's like a mobile fret. Now you can put your fret wherever you want it along the length of the guitar. show you today is how to put marks on a guitar um, based upon the scale length that you use. So like a bass guitar would have a 30 inch, 32 inch, 34 inch length scale from the bridge to the nut. Uh, a ukulele probably 17 inches from the bridge to the nut. So it, it sounds higher pitch, bass sounds low pitch. So let's, let's see how my method of putting marks for a fret. This one I actually drilled little holes and put plugs in there and it doesn't show where every fret would be but because I know where these frets are I can guesstimate where the in-between frets go. Um, I'm going to do a method that shows you it's going to look like that where all the frets are there and they have a position marker of which ones are which. Anyway, too much talking. Let's check this out. <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to mark the neck where the frets would go. And the scale we're going to use, so from the nut up top to the bridge here, the actual scale we're going to use is 25 and a half inches, which is, from my understanding, fairly standard for either an electric or an acoustic guitar. It's just, it's a, it's a good average scale length. Now you can either look up and buy online like this, a template. This shows you exactly where the marks would go for your fret. You can do it mathematically. Look it up on uh, Google. Uh, I once copied it from an actual guitar. I just took a piece of paper, laid it on top of the neck of the guitar, and marked where the frets were on that one. But I bought this because it's convenient. 
and it works really well. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to lay this on top of here, and I'm going to make a mark where each one of these lines are. Alright, so I've marked all the way down. I've used this template it's to 20, 25 and a half inch scale. So I've got these little marks on here. So all we're going to do is we're going to cut a little notch and each one where each one of these marks are, and that's going to represent where the fret would be. Now if I was actually fretting the guitar, I would do the same thing. I would cut a notch. This is a piece of fret wire and it has a little tang on the bottom of it. So you cut, this is an actual fretting saw. Um, any pull saw would work, like a small one with a, a real thin kerf on it. Uh, this is a box door pull saw. My buddy Phil Pinsky, Iron and Soul, this is a very nice pull saw, very rigid, but I can use this one. The depth I'm going to cut is just a little bit more depth than the actual teeth of the saw. And what you would do is you would cut each one of these places, you would put the fret on there, and we'll make another video actually fretting this. It's not that hard. People think it's really hard. For a cigar box guitar, when you're dealing with a, a flat surface, a, a standard guitar is usually it's curved. The top of it has got a little bit of a, a, a curve to it, right? So it makes it a little bit more difficult. But this is simple. We're just cutting a little notch on each one of those marks. And then you would normally, if you were going to use a fret, just stick it in there, cut it to about the right width, tap it, anyway. Another video sometime. But for now, all we're going to do is cut that slot, but we're not going to put any fret in it. So I'll take this neck out of here. And let's start by doing that. So I'm going to use uh, just a simple fretting saw, and this is a, my buddy Tim Sway made this. This is a, a layout tool. It's called the Square with a, his name in it. Anyway, this has a bunch of little marks. It's very handy, and I'm actually going to use this for this because it works really well. In the process of building the Cigar Box guitar, I've used it for finding uh, center point, everything. But anyway, check it out. Simple. All I'm going to do, I'm going to line this up where that mark is. So this thing is square, right, with the Tim Sway square. And I'm simply going to So now that I've got all of these notches cut, I'm going to put my template back up here and I'm going to transfer these little dots. Now these dots re represent the third, fifth, seven, nine, anyway, they represent a numerical order of what frets go there. Um, if we were actually using frets, you would put a fret here. That would be the twelfth fret, so you would know to put your finger here to push down, and the string would, like we talked about, the string would then become short from here forward. Well, on a slide guitar, your slide is going to go directly over where that fret is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark these actual spaces on the line itself. So I'm going to start up here and I'm going to say, okay, I know this is the third. And I'm just going to put a little mark right there. I know five, seven, nine, twelve, 15, 17, 19, and the 21st. So I know all of these spaces are going to have a mark on them. Now I'm going to take my square, the Tim Sway square layout tool. This is about an inch and a half wide, so I know three quarters is the, the center. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go to each one of those that I marked, and I'm going to put a mark on the center. So on this one here, there's the center on that one. Center on that one. Anyway, you get the point. I'm going to go all the way up the line with this. And we'll show you the next step. Oh, hey. So I've laid out all the marks. I've got the notches cut, and now we're going to actually burn these into the wood. It's a cool look, and it's simple to do. 
I'm going to take this uh, cheap paint scraper, I'm going to take a torch, I'm going to heat that up and I'm going to use this to go right in those slots and make a perfectly burnt line. And then I'm going to take a soldering iron, now, this is a super old soldering iron, but anyway it's got that nice flat tip on it and I'm going to go over each one of those little marks that we made and that's where I'm going to put the uh, fret indicators using this to burn a line this way. So on each one where the 3, 5, 7, 9, 12 will have two, it'll have a nice little cross mark on it and that'll, that helps you identify where those frets are. Um, let's, let's get going. And then I got another soldering iron I'm going to use to make little dots on the top. I'll show you that in a minute. But let's, uh, let's start burning these while I plug that in and get this warmed up. So we'll move the torch out of the way. Now our solder iron should be nice and hot. So every place on the neck that we put that little mark, I'm going to take this and I'm going to burn a little cross right over the top of that line. So the first one is here at the third fret, five, seven, like I said, I can see the marks. So I'm just going to take and use this, get it on there. Apply a little pressure, and then we have that. There's there's our um, slot indicator, and I can use the square to steady this as well. All right, pretty cool. So I've I've made all the fret marks with the uh, notching of the wood and the burning with the putty knife. Uh, the little cross marks with the, the flat tip solder iron, very cool. One more mark to go, and this is going to be a right-handed guitar. So a right-handed person would be holding it like this. And on guitars, there's also a little mark to help you identify the frets that's on top. Because when you're playing it, you're looking down here, you don't always see the front of the guitar. So there's other little marks that go right on top here in the same spot as I made those. And I'm going to use a regular soldering iron for that. So I'm going to put this neck like yo, uh, just for a little stability right here. And then I have my electronics soldering iron. So I'm just going to take this guy, and square, again just to stabilize this. And I'm going to look for every place that I made a mark on there, I'm going to make a mark right where the wood, two different color woods are. Make it easy for myself. a little dot. Yeah, hey. So this is one of the techniques that I use to mark the fretboard or the fingerboard. Uh, on a fretless slide guitar you still need to be able to see these marks are important so that's one of the ways I do it, by burning it in. It looks pretty cool. There's some other stuff that I'll do and I've been experimenting with, but I like this technique. It's, it's uh, fairly easy and it's accurate enough. And like I said, you're going to have fun with it. So I'm going to sand this up. I'm going to clean it so uh, it won't, you won't see the burn marks around the edge. It'll just be like dark filled in there. Anyway, give me um, to you what will be a few seconds. And this will be completely done with a finished coat put on it, put together and assembled. It's actually going to be a couple more days, so we'll see you in just a sec. Hold on. Oh, hey. Movie magic. It's all done and put together. It took just a second. Um, this came out really pretty. So that's my method of, of marking the neck and putting the fret markers on it. I would play this right-handed because it's a right-handed guitar for you. But that's wrong, and I'm left-handed, so I'm going to try and play a little something for you. Uh, I have to play it backwards and upside down. So let's see.
it's enough. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. We'll, we'll do some more videos about how I put these things together. I love making cigar box guitars, three string. This is an acoustic version. It sounds amazing. I don't think you can hear it on the camera, but the resonation, the vibration of the strings through this box, just, it's awesome. Check out links below. There's um, Tim Sway made that square, that tool, that layout tool. I'm gonna leave a link to that. It's an awesome tool. I'm not just blowing smoke, just because he's my friend and my podcast mate. Also, Phil Pinsky, Iron and Soul. Uh, you can get a pole saw and some other really nice, actual really nice woodworking tools. Uh, and I'll leave a link to that as well. Check out our podcast, Reclaimed Audio. And you can find information about that at reclaimedaudio.com. I love you all. Thank you for um, watching. Bye.